It ends with us chapter 6 It's already been 53 days since Joya left my apartment, which also means it's been 53 days since I last heard from him. But that's okay, because I've been busy preparing for this moment over the past 53 days and haven't had time to think about him. Eliza asked if I was ready. I nodded, and she flipped the sign to open. We hugged each other and excitedly squealed like little kids. We hurried behind the counter, waiting for our first customer to arrive. This is just a soft opening, so I haven't done any marketing. We just want to make sure there are no issues before the grand opening. Eliza looked around, admiring our hard work. It's so beautiful here, she said. I looked around, feeling a sense of pride. Of course, I want to succeed, but at this moment, I'm not even sure if that's important. I had a dream, I worked hard to achieve it, and whatever happens from today on is just the cherry on top. It smells so good here, I said. I love this scent. I wasn't sure if we would have any customers today, but the two of us were acting like this was the best thing we'd ever experienced. Besides, Marshall Goman will be coming today, and my mother will come after work, so that's already two customers, which is plenty. When the front door began to open, Eliza squeezed my arm, and I suddenly panicked, worrying about what might go wrong. Then I really started to panic, because something had gone terribly wrong. My first customer was Royal Kincaid. As the door closed behind him, he stopped and looked around. Wow, he said, spinning around. How is this possible? He looked at Eliza and me. This is incredible, it doesn't look like the same place at all. Okay, maybe I could accept him being the first customer. It took him a few minutes to reach the counter, because he kept touching and inspecting everything. When he finally got to us, Eliza ran out from behind the counter and hugged him. Isn't it beautiful, she said, waving in my direction. It was all her idea, every bit of it. I just helped with some of the heavy lifting. Royal laughed. I find it hard to believe your Pinterest skills didn't come into play at all. I nodded she's being modest. Her skills are half the reason this vision became a reality. Royal smiled at me, and that smile felt like a knife stabbing into my chest, it hurt so much. He placed his hands on the counter and said, am I the first official customer? Eliza handed him one of our flyers. You have to actually buy something to count as a customer. Royal glanced at the flyer, then set it back on the counter. He walked over to a display, picked up a bottle of lilies, and said, I'll take these, placing the flowers on the counter. I smiled, not sure if he realized he had just chosen lilies, which was rather ironic. Do you want us to deliver them somewhere? Eliza asked. You offer delivery services? Royal asked. Eliza and I don't, I replied. We have a delivery driver on standby but I'm not sure we'll really need him today. Eliza asked, are you really sending these flowers to a girl? She was just prying into her brother's love life like a sister would. I unconsciously moved closer to her to hear his answer more clearly. Yes, he said, meeting my gaze and adding, but I hardly think of her, almost never. Eliza handed him a card. Poor girl, she said, you're such a jerk. She tapped the card with her finger, write your message to her on the front, and the delivery address on the back. I watched as he bent over to write on the card, and I knew I had no right to feel this way, but I was burning with jealousy. Are you going to bring this girl to my birthday party? Eliza asked him. I watched his reaction closely as he shook his head without looking up. No, he said. Lily, are you coming? Just by his tone, I couldn't tell whether he wanted me to come or not. Considering the pressure I've put on him, I guessed it was the latter. I haven't decided yet, I said. She'll come, Eliza answered for me. She looked at me, squinting, you have to come to my party no matter what. If you don't, I'll quit. 
After Royal finished writing, he slipped the card into the envelope attached to the flowers. When Eliza rang him up, he paid in cash. As he counted the money, he looked at me and said, Lily, you know the tradition for a new store is to frame the first dollar earned, right? Of course, I knew, and he knew I knew. He was just showing off that his dollar would be hanging in my store forever. I almost wanted Eliza to give him his money back, but this is business, and I had to swallow my pride. After he received the receipt, he tapped the counter to get my attention, lowered his head slightly, and gave me a sincere smile, saying, Congratulations, Lily. Then he turned and walked out the door. As soon as the door closed, Eliza grabbed the envelope. Who is he sending flowers to? She said as she pulled out the card. Royal never sends flowers. She read the front of the card out loud, make it stop, oh my god. She stared at the card, repeating, make it stop, over and over. What does that even mean? She asked. I couldn't take it anymore, so I snatched the card from her and flipped it over. She leaned in to read it with me. She laughed and said, he's such an idiot, he wrote our shop's address as the delivery address. She took the card back from me. Wow, he bought me flowers, not just any flowers, but a whole bucket of lilies. Eliza picked up her phone. I'll text him and let him know he made a mistake. After sending the message, she smiled at the bouquet and said, how could this new regular customer be so dumb? I couldn't help but laugh, feeling a sense of relief that she was focused on the flowers and not on me, or she might have put two and two together. I picked up the vase and took my flowers away.